So, Sheriff-elect Mitzi Jo Hanknick, uh, does this moment feel a bit surreal? Did you expect this outcome? Um, it's unusual hearing that, um, but it's, uh, it's been a, an interesting campaign and a great election cycle this week, and it's, it's really thrilling um, to have you call this race earlier today. It kind of just hits you in the heart and soul to go, it's real, it's happening. Mm -hmm. um, take us through the past few weeks, because this race did end up in a very heated, escalated place. Um, you know, there's been a lot of new developments, and just what have the past couple of months and weeks been like? Well, I've been working out in the community, doing some community forums with John, and, and having that interaction. Um, you know, the last couple of weeks, um, the accusations that have, have come uh, against our campaign, doing things on purpose to his campaign, um, hasn't felt good um, because that's not what we're about. We're about talking about facts and running our race and, and, and being in contact with the community and talking about reimagining law enforcement. That's been our goal. Mm -hmm. It is striking that you have a major within the same office running against an incumbent sheriff. Um, and I know that you spoke last night on King 5, one of your first priorities will be healing the sheriff's office yes. internally. Mm -hmm. How do you go about doing that? I, I think it's about listening. It's out and getting in contact with the members of the sheriff's organization and, and letting them know how proud I am of them for being professional through this whole campaign. Their um, amazing focus on work and staying out of what's been going on in the election cycle, um, it's pretty impressive. So it's talking to them, listening to them, um, working with Sheriff Urquhart to transition our, our teams. Do you see the team changing much? How does that work, especially with an internal transition? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. Um, with the election being called today, um, we haven't really started to focus on the next steps, and so certainly when we hit the ground tomorrow running, uh, that will be the focus of building a transition team and determining uh, where we go and how we deliver the, the commitments we made to the community. Right, which, I mean, public safety is obviously on, on everyone's mind, the community's mind. They yes. want to make sure that the sheriff's office is working every day to do the best to protect the community. So do you feel like there is an internal division or internal politics that are impacting that? No, I don't think so at all. I think um, folks have been worried about um, whether or not... Um, whether or not they might be singled out and picked on. Um, but aside from that, the fear of coming forward and supporting our campaign as an example. Like I said, the everyday work that they're doing is about the public safety for residents of King County, for, for everybody that comes through King County. Mm. Um, so I see um, them working hard. I see them um, continuing that work and then uh, we'll work to, with them for the focus into the future. Mm -hmm. And then how do you boost morale, I guess, if there, if there is, aside from, obviously, you know, law enforcement officers do their best every day to yes. do their job and the task at hand, but if there is kind of been this internal divide among who to support during this race, how do you go in there and boost morale? Um, I think that uh, from what I've heard from members of the organization today, that they're breathing a sigh of relief, that there's an answer about who the leader's going to be uh, in 2018. And so um, I think that the morale will increase because they have an out answer and an outcome today. Mm -hmm. How do you think your leadership style is going to be different um, than the, the previous sheriff or previous, I mean, you're not the first female sheriff yeah. in King County, but talk about your leadership style. Yeah, so I'm inclusive and collaborative. Um, I'm uh, passionate about what we do and how we can do it best. But I, I like to surround myself with people who um, have different skills and talents and know things that I don't know. And so to mix up around the upper leadership and use uh, the skills of, of the members of the organization so that um, it's not just about one person making the decisions in the organization. 
that there's, there's decision making up and down the organization. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about um, moving from internal, you know, the, the internal inner workings of the sheriff's office to outside in the community, reimagining law enforcement, as you've yeah. said. What does that mean exactly? Well, we're at a crossroads with what our communities expect of law enforcement. And so um, we've seen across the nation over the past few years uh, that their expectations of us are, are higher and that we hold ourselves to a higher standard and that we work diligently to serve them. And, and so um, for me, it's about making sure that we're looking into the future. What are the future cr crimes that are going to be committed? What about cyber crimes? But then there's quality of life crimes, like just people speeding through the neighborhood and, and those things that impact their daily lives. And so for me, it's doing community councils and getting advice from the community. Mm -hmm. um, once we're through with this part of the, the election cycle, it's about listening to people, not talking at them mm -hmm. and, and hearing what they have to say. There's been a lot of talk about community policing, of course, police accountability mm -hmm. and reform. Um, what do you think needs to change when we look at this region and, and the King County Sheriff's Office? What would you like to see change? I think it's a great opportunity to have reform that, um, you know, we've, I've talked about we could have done five years ago. A lot of that is having really good de-escalation training for, to deal with people in crisis in particular. But it comes into play in all the, all the uh, communication we have with, with people we speak to, whether victims or suspects in crimes. So de-escalation training, crisis intervention training, other training that prepares us for people with addiction and mental health issues, and, and so that's important. Aside from that, also making sure that we have all the tools available to our deputies working patrol. And those are less lethal options that are currently available that we don't have deployed right now. And that's high on my list to get done. Okay. Um, and finally, do you think that, I mean, obviously, um, you know, the criminal justice system uh, will reveal what it will about the current investigation into Sheriff Urquhart and the allegations. But do you think that had a, an impact on this race or that coinciding with the, the Me Too movement? A lot of, um, you know, that's been a point of discussion in the community. You know, the investigation will take its course, and that was pretty late in the campaign. So what I've thought about this is that the whole uh, sexual harassment, Me Too, um, women speaking out across the nation, I believe has had more of an impact. And I, and I watched on election night from, from Virginia moving west, the number of women elected to office, I think is amazing. Um, people of color, LGBTQ, it's, uh, it's uh, impressive, and so I think that's what it had the impact.